This video is 9.3, the integral and integral test and the P-series, okay? So these are two different methods that we can use now. Um, instead of using the partial sums way to find out if a series converges or diverges. So um, if f is positive, continuous, and decreasing for x greater than or equal to 1, and a can be defined as f of n, then the series of a n and the integral of f of x dx either both converge or both diverge. Now this is helpful because we've already talked about integrals and whether they converge or diverge. Basically, if you take the integral and you get a, um, a definite number, then you, your series converges. But if you get an infinite number, then the series diverges, okay? Or if it doesn't exist, then again, it still diverges, okay? So we have a way to find these out, and we can apply that to theorems like to a series like these. So it says apply the integral test to the series. So the first thing we have to do is let a n equal f of n, where f of x equals x over x squared plus 1. Okay, that's the way we need to begin this problem. Without making this statement, you beginning to talk about this integral is not allowed because then you don't understand or the reader doesn't understand why are you bringing this up and what does this have to do with your original series okay so you must state this whenever you're trying to apply the integral test without this statement again like i said there's no sense in talking about this integral and how it relates to the original series okay so you must start this with this statement in order for you to talk about this integral okay and where did the bounds come from the bounds come from the bounds of the summation okay so it goes from 1 to infinity so my bounds went from 1 to infinity and instead of using a n I use my function that I've defined here okay so now let's look we can do u substitution if I let u equal um, x squared plus 1, then that means du would equal 2x dx, or I could say du over 2 would equal x dx. So what happens is this integral will become 1 half, 1 to infinity, of du over u, which is the ln of the absolute value of u again evaluated from 1 to infinity but these are x values okay so we've got a back sub and plug back in what u was now because I have x squared plus 1 that quantity is always positive so I don't necessarily need to have bars around it um, if you want to continue to write the bars around it it's totally fine but it's not necessary so remember when you're doing this um, Informally, you can plug in the infinity, but formally, you cannot plug in the infinity. So typically what we do when we have problems like this is we say take the limit as b goes to infinity of this expression 1 to b, okay? And this limit could have been uh, written at the very beginning before you started integrating or it can be written now okay but either way we need to figure out what's happening when this bound is going to infinity so I can take out the one half um, and then I can plug in my B and plug in my um, one one squared plus one is just going to give me two okay now before I continue this problem, I do want to see what that looks like. So let's go to our calculator here and type in ln and my variable in the calculator is x. So ln x squared plus 1 and graph that and let's see what happens as x is going to infinity. Well, as x goes to infinity, if I zoom out, Notice that this is still increasing without bound. So this is also going to infinity. And it doesn't matter whether I'm multiplying um, by one half or if I'm minusing a uh, finite number. 
That's the word I was looking for when I was talking about up here. It converges when this is a finite number and it diverges when this is an infinite number. Um, it doesn't matter if I'm subtracting something, a real, um, a finite number here, I'll still get infinity. And if I'm multiplying it by half, it really doesn't matter, it's still infinity. Which means that this series here, this series that we were originally talking about, diverges. Okay, now let's look at example two. I'm having a feeling most times when they give you one example that diverges, the second example is probably going to converge just so you can see the difference between the two, right? Um, that's usually how the problems are picked out for the sections. So it says apply the integral test to this series. So we're going to do the same thing. Start off with let a n equal f of n where f of x is defined as 1 over x squared plus 1. Then I can talk about the integral from 1 to infinity, again using these bounds and then my function. Okay, now here notice that we don't have u and du because there's no x's in the numerator. However, we do have a formula, the arctan. So if you go look over to your integral page, you have something that looks like this, where u is actually equal to x, and then du is equal to dx, which I have both of those pieces and then a is equal to 1, okay? So this will actually become um, 1 over a, which is just 1, arctan of u over a, which is x over 1, which is just x. And I do have to evaluate it at these bounds. Now, formally, I have to take a limit. Informally, I like to just plug it in. But if you plug it in, you have to remember what you're doing is finding out what happens as that x value goes to infinity. So um, informally, yes, I'm plugging it in like I would any other number instead of writing the limit. But I do need to look at that function as to what's happening as my um, angle here is going to infinity. So as my angle is going to infinity, I am approaching a horizontal asymptote there. Okay. Um, you may or may not know what that horizontal asymptote is, but there is a way to figure it out, okay? Because something goes to infinity, um, the easiest way, I mean, I know what it is, but the easiest way I can explain it is that if you have, let's look at it over here on the side, okay? If you have the arc 10 of um, infinity, and you want to find out what angle that is, it's like saying the tangent of what angle will make you go to infinity, right? So when does that happen? Well, remember, tangent is nothing more than sine over cosine. And when it comes to fractions, the smaller that the denominator gets, the larger the, the problem gets. So what you want to do is you want to look for when you have this kind of problem. Now this is undefined, but it's undefined because it goes to infinity, okay? And, and I'm not saying, remember the notation here, we're not using the limit notation, but we are in fact talking about limits. So what happens as this value goes to infinity? That's the same thing as saying what happens, um, where, does, where is the angle that the value will approach infinity? Or, what is the sine and the cosine of this angle so that it approaches infinity? Well, if it's approaching infinity, then your denominator is approaching zero. And your numerator is usually one, uh, but it could be anything, honestly. But if you look in your, your circle here, where does the sine equal one and the cosine equal zero? That happens at pi over two, when the sine of is 1 and the cosine is 0. So as I'm approaching this point, the, va the y values are actually, or I'm sorry, the tangent values are actually going to be approaching infinity. Also, if you look at tangent, tangent looks like this, right? The graph of it. This first asymptote happens at pi over 2, okay? So whether you're looking at the graph of this or you're looking at your unit circle, you should figure out that all this is going to happen when your angle is pi over 2. So now I know as my x values or as my values here approach infinity, 
this is going to be approaching the angle pi over 2. Similarly, if I want arc 10 of 1, that means I want to find when the sine and the cosine equals 1, which means I basically want to find when the sine equals the cosine, if I multiply both sides by the common denominator. And that happens here at pi over 4. So when that angle is pi over 4. And if I subtract the two values, I end up with pi over 4. This is a finite number, so that tells me that the series converges. Okay. Now what this doesn't tell you is what the series converges to. Okay. Now it may not be true that this series converges to this number. That's not what that theorem told me. All the theorem told me was that if this um, integral converges, then so is the series. So all I know is that this series converges. I don't necessarily know what it converges to. Okay, And that's okay because that's not what they asked me. They just wanted me to figure out whether it converges or diverges.